Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about 10 romance books that have wonderful anxiety representation in them. These 10 books <laughs> mean a lot to me, and it's also saying something that I own every single book that I'm going to be talking about today in this video. Like, it's saying something that I have a physical copy of all of these. Um, that means I love them a lot that I decided to have all of these books, you know? I read a lot like digitally, so it's saying a lot that I have all 10 of them physically. Um, I just, these books mean a lot to me. Um, I am someone who has anxiety. I generalize anxiety and also specifically social anxiety. Some people don't think that because I'm able to talk to a camera so easily. I'm alone in my room and I've been doing this for almost six years, so. And some of the characters in these books don't have generalized anxiety or social anxiety. They have a different form of anxiety. But the discussion of anxiety in every single one of these books made me feel so seen to a point where I gave almost every single book in this in this video five stars, if not every single one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but all 10 of these books mean so much to me. If you have anxiety and you want to read a book with amazing representation where you feel really seen, I really recommend picking up one of these books. The first one that I would love to mention is Royally Matched by Emma Chase. This is one of my favorite romances of all time. This is the romance between Henry and Sarah. So I do want to mention also this is the second book in a series and I do recommend reading book one first because the ramifications of book one lead to what happens to our hero in book two. So I rarely recommend reading book one first. That one's called Royally Screwed, but this book, Royally Matched book two, is one of my favorite books ever. It's totally worth the read. Um, so Henry here is actually a prince. He's the prince of a made up country named West Co. He is kind of bored. He's a prince that gets into a lot of trouble, you know, and he's kind of bored. He's like, what can I do to spice up my life right now? Like, I'm so bored. And so this kind of like cable show company like comes up to him and is like, hey, we'd love to have you as kind of like our bachelor for our show. So we'll do like bachelor royal edition. Now I just want to pause and say, I like don't like reality TV show books. Like I don't like them. This, the reality TV show aspect in it, minuscule and it was so well done for the minuscule amount that there was in it so i just want to mention that i normally hate reality tv show books so anyway back into the summary so henry here agrees to do this show to do bachelor royal edition and there are some stipulations when you're a prince on who you can and cannot marry so one of them is like she has to be a titled lady if you're a prince you have to marry a titled lady and so the hero ends up inviting these titled ladies in westco to come onto the reality show with him sarah in here is the heroine of this book and her sister ends up being called to be on the show because her sister and her they are uh titled women they come from a long line of titled people i don't know how to describe it anyway so sarah and her sister are titled women but she is has decided not to be a part of the show, but she's gonna stay with her sister, like in the same estate that she's staying at, to just keep her company um, while she's filming. And also to just make sure her sister doesn't get into any trouble because her sister is a little bit rambunctious <laughs> and gets into trouble. So Henry ends up meeting Sarah while they're filming and he instantly becomes smitten with her. So it's kind of a little bit forbidden because she's not on the show. One of the reasons she does not agree to be on the show is because of her anxiety. It's never explicitly stated, by the way, in a lot of these books, uh, what form of anxiety uh, the character has. Um, but I, based off of my feelings and the way I relate to Sarah so much, I would say that she has social anxiety and I just felt her so, I, oh, so much. So Sarah also has some PTSD. Um, she experienced some traumatic things when it comes to her father growing up and so she also has dissociative fugue state so um she has like a loud popping sound or a loud um crashing sound can trigger something it can cause dissociative fugue state where you e end up basically just blacking out from reality um and so I, I i really felt sarah if you know about me and my chronic illness and my experience with it like she means a lot to me and the, the discussion about social anxiety and seeing Sarah grow and becoming her own person in here was so relatable and Henry is one of the most sweetest caring men I've ever read about in a book like he has totally grown throughout the entire book and I totally appreciate that so if you have not read Worthy Matched yet please do. Next I have Hearts and Darkness by Laura Kay. This is a little short novella that I flew through and I am obsessed with. This is the romance between McKenna and Caden. Caden and McKenna are in the same building, okay? 
um, that this book takes place in. And Caden is already standing in the elevator at the start of this book and McKenna walks in. They both don't notice the other person. They're, own in their, they're both in their own little world thinking about something or on their phone. They don't know what the other person looks like, but they're both on the same elevator, just not paying attention. You know, like sometimes you get into an elevator, you're preoccupied, you don't notice anybody else in there. But then the elevator basically stops and all the lights are shut off and they are both stuck in the elevator for many hours and not knowing who the other person is really, like what they look like on the outside. And um, they kind of have like this moment in time together, these many hours in time together where they really get to know each other and sparks fly between the two of them. And this leads to a romance between the two that also leads into the second novella in this series. But this one is really fantastic. I just love the thought of falling in love with someone not knowing what they look like. Hayden in here is a little bit worried to see what uh, McKenna's reaction is going to be towards him because he is this giant tattooed pierced man. And um, by the way that he's like talking to her, like she does not seem like the woman that would be into a guy like him, but man, she totally is into him. <laughs> there is a panic attacks on page. Caden is the one who has anxiety in here and he finds their situation that they're in very anxiety inducing and very stressful. Um, so I really related to Caden in here. But man, if you just want a short little novella to like make you feel amazing, that'll just, it's like a feel good, fantastic romance. You need to pick this up. Next I have Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. This is obviously a historical romance. This is the romance between Christina and Oliver. So Christina, I believe she's from England and her parents are kind of using her to get their fortune back. Like they're broke and they're like, okay, the way we can get money back is if we sell our daughter to kind of like the highest bidder, the highest man that'll pay for her. We don't care if he's mean or gross or anything. Like as long as he's rich, um, we want our daughter to marry him. The heroine here, Christina, is not happy about this at all. They end up traveling to America to find the man that they're gonna set her up with. He's this gross old dude and she is, she's, she's devastated, okay? They're staying at her aunt's estate and to escape the balls and parties and get togethers that are happening at the estate, she ends up walking along her aunt's neighbor's gardens. Um, Christina has social anxiety. Um, again, it's in this time period, that's not what it was called, but is definitely, you can see that. And so uh, to escape her thoughts and her troublesome and her anxieties, um, she ends up walking around these gardens and then she gets caught one day by the neighbor who owns the gardens and he is not very happy that she's on his property. There's also another representation here, Oliver is deaf and he's currently trying to invent the first ever hearing aid, I'm pretty sure, which is so cool. It was so cool to read about. Anyway, things happen to where they have to get in a marriage of convenience and uh, Oliver is not very happy about this, um, but he ends up falling for Christina, obviously. This one was so incredibly sweet. I really, really, really related to Christina and even Oliver at times. And this is a historical that I just, I will never ever stop thinking about. When a Scott Ties the Knot by Tessa Dare is another amazing historical romance with anxiety representation. This is the third book in the Castles Ever After series. This is a historical romance series by Tessa Dare that you can totally read on its own. The only commonality is like, the heroines of this of these books, all of them like inherit a castle from like a long lost godfather or something. This one is very funny. I feel like all Tessa Dare's historicals are super funny. If you want to get into historicals, she's totally, totally the way to go. Maddie in here, her family is basically pressuring her to find a husband, to go into society, go to balls, go to functions, meet a man and get married. Maddie does not, does not want to do that. That's like the worst possible thing she can think of. She has social anxiety in here and I oh, I so related to her for that. She like would make up excuses to not go to balls, pretend to be sick. And there, there comes this point where people are stopping, like not believing her in her excuses that so she's like, okay, I gotta figure out what else I can do. Cause like, I can't, I can't go do those things. I cannot, I know that's the last thing I ever want to do. And so she tells her family that she's actually engaged like a Scotsman off at war named Logan McKenzie. And to like make the ruse like real, she writes letters to him constantly and actually addresses them to Logan McKenzie, knowing that, um, oh, it's just gonna, it's just gonna like not go to anyone because there is no Logan McKenzie in this battlement, you know? She's in for shock when, <laughs> After a while, a man in a kilt shows up on her doorstep and he's like, hey, I'm, I'm here to marry you. I can't wait to marry you. And she's like, who are you? The cheeky man ends up saying, uh, I'm your fiance. You've been writing for me for a while. So this is an actual Logan McKenzie. This is an actual Logan McKenzie that exists. And he's been getting these woman's letters and he wants to take her up on her offer to get married. And Maddie is 
mortified. And so her family is so excited. They're like, oh my gosh, we get, get to meet the man Maddie's been talking about for so long. And so they have to like fake be together, even though Logan wants it to be real. And um, it is so good. Um, I just loved Maddie in here obviously because of the social anxiety representation but like she's also just so cool like she uh studies um like lobsters and like plant life and and uh sea creatures and she has like her own little like terrarium not so, sorry like aquarium terrarium studio like it's it's so cool an author that has amazing representation in her books is talia hibbert and so i have two books for you today that i want to mention by talia hibbert that has amazing anxiety representation. First, I have to mention That Kind of Guy by Tally Hibbert. This is one of my favorites by her. This is the romance between Ray and Zach, and this is an age gap romance where the heroine is older. And it's a friends to lovers as well. They have to fake date for a certain reason. Um, but Ray in here has also my chronic illness pots, and Zach is also demisexual. He's figuring out that he's demisexual. And so um, there's that element in there as well. Like her books are so diverse, I love it. But Ray in here specifically has a lot of anxieties due to kind of like trauma in her life and the same can also go for Zach so I feel like anxiety is really talked about with both of them in this book. Ray specifically she had a previous marriage that just left her with horrible thoughts about herself and horrible thoughts about the world and everything and it it left her with a lot of anxiety and her husband really brought that on. She's currently healing and growing from that which I really really loved in here but I want to leave you with that because I don't want to go too much into this one because I don't want to spoil it but this one was so good. And then obviously we also have Take a Hint Danny Brown by Telly Hibbert. This is one where Zaph our hero has anxiety. This is the romance between Danny and Zaf. They are friends. So Zaf is kind of the like security person, security guard at uh, the college that um, Danny works at. She's a professor for. And one day um, they're doing like a fire drill or something and no one tells Danny. And so she's in the elevator and the elevator stops. And then Zaf realizes that she's stuck on the elevator and he goes to save her. He carries her out fireman style <laughs> like this out of the building and a bunch of students end up taking pictures of them and posting on social media and they kind of go viral and because of this like more people are looking into Zaf. He was a previous rugby player um, who recently retired. He's the runner of this very important like charity organization and because more people are noticing him they're like checking out his charity more and so they decide to fake date and like feed into the kind of like trending piece of this that they've been in um, to hopefully get more traction with his charity. This charity specifically deals a lot with young men in sports and their mental health, which I just loved because that specifically really has to deal a lot with his anxiety. And I just, I loved the discussion and representation of that in this book. Next, I have a paranormal romance. This is Dark Desires After Dusk by Presley Cole. This is book number five in this series. So I believe every Immortals After Dark book, like you could read as a standalone, but I feel like the world building definitely gets established more in book one and if you read them all in order. So anyway, this is the romance between Caden and Holly. So Caden is actually a demon. You can tell from the cover. He does not look like a demon on the cover. <laughs> and he's kind of been tasked to save Holly, who does not know that she is a part of the um, like paranormal world. Um, she's actually half human, half Valkyrie, I'm pretty sure. And when she realizes like she, when she becomes like her full Valkyrie self, she is so confused. And um, Kaden really tries to help her learn the world of the lore. I really related to Holly because of her anxiety in here. Um, specifically in the beginning, like you read about her, her life before she figured out that she was a part of this world. And just like the way that she uh, talked to people and would avoid talking to people because of her anxiety, like uh, I really related to her in that. I loved seeing her grow in here, like seeing her figure out who she really is and how confident she can be like, I loved her so much. And then their romance was so spoony, Kate in here, he can get it any day of the week, okay? <laughs> I do want to mention a new adult romance, okay? The characters are in high school, okay? Just forewarning you. Um, but it has one of my favorite representations of anxiety that I've ever read ever. And this is The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the romance between Mallory and Ryder and growing up, they were foster siblings. They were in a very abusive foster home. Mallory was able to escape it one day and she was adopted by two uh, doctors, but Ryder never left the foster system. Um, they have not seen each other since they were small kids, where Ryder, when they were kids, Ryder was her protector, basically. Ever since Mallory was adopted by these two doctors, uh, she's always been homeschooled. She's dealt with a lot in her life. She doesn't speak 
normally to people. And that stems from her foster parents telling her to be quiet constantly and to not make a sound. And she has some built-in anxiety and trauma because of what she's experienced. So oh, I related to her so hard. Like I could cry, like every time I read this book, I cry because of how much I relate to Mallory in here. Um, but anyway, it's years, a few years after she's been adopted and she's in high school and she really wants to, I believe it's her senior year, she wants to go to high school for the first time and experience real high school. She goes to the public high school in her parents' uh, neighborhood, her adoptive parents' neighborhood, and there she bumps into, or she sits down next to in her first class, Ryder, her childhood protector. And he is shocked to see Mallory sitting there and man this romance is so good to me like this I haven't read this in quite a long time but in high school and in college like this was the book that I would reread on one of the books that I would reread every single year because of how much I thought about it and how much I loved it so if you want to read a more new adult book that has fantastic anxiety representation you need to pick this one up the last two I want to mention are both from Chloe Lisa okay I love her she's another author that just has amazing representation in her books um first I want to mention Ever After Always which is book number three in the Bergman Brothers series. Um, we have Freya in here, who is a Bergman sister, not brother. And this is her marriage and trouble romance with Aiden on the cover. Aiden, our hero, is the one with anxiety. Another character I really, really, really related to. Um, so their marriage is kind of on the rocks. They've been married for quite a long time and they really wanna start a family soon. And Aiden didn't have the best childhood growing up because his family was not financially stable. And so he really wants to make enough money and like make his family or their family financially stable enough to be able to provide the life he did not have for his future kids. By doing that, he ends up spending a lot of time in the office and not a lot of time at home. Freya is kind of sick of this. She ends up kicking him out one day and saying, you are not being a good husband. I feel like you have not been paying attention to me for quite a long time and I'm sick of this. This needs to change. And so this book is about them reconnecting and finding their spark all over again. Um, cause I love how in this book, like, I think they go to a therapist and the therapist talks about like, when you've been married for so long, you kind of change in the way that you love people. The way that you love someone 10 years ago might not be the same way you love or appreciate love now. Um, so you gotta learn your partner again. You gotta learn how they receive love and how they give love all over again. Um, Cause people grow and people change. And so that was, I loved that part. The discussion of therapy in here was also fantastic. So it's about the two of them learning each other again, especially in the romance department. And then Aiden in here figuring out and dealing with his anxieties. And then a recent read of mine is Two Rungs Make a Right. This is the fake dating romance between B and Jamie. So B and Jamie end up meeting at this party at a mutual friends party, um, but they don't really get along at first. Like they're not really into each other. Um, and then a couple days later, their friends end up secretly setting them up on a blind date with each other. And then they end up seeing each other on the date and they're like, oh no it's you it's you our friends they they mess with us okay and so they decide to get back at their friends by fake dating kind of feeding into what they did jamie is the one in here with anxiety and i really related to him obviously that's all i'm gonna leave you with because i don't want to spoil anything when it comes to this book because i really 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 loved it another representation in here is autism um b is autistic and i just love the discussion of that in here as well anyways there you have it those were 10 romance books with anxiety representation in them please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you have any recommendations i obviously i obviously love anxiety representation in my romances. So please give me recommendations. Um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a tree emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.